that mid tier range. Warriors, Suns, and the Lakers. There were some real high expectations for these teams coming into the season. You have the Warriors there at 22. Obviously, CP3 just went out with a broken hand. Steph Curry hasn't really been himself. And then you've got uh, the Draymond Green situation, which will not get go mm. away. You've got the Suns at 20. Uh, we haven't really seen the big three together, small sample size. And then, of course, the Lakers at 19. They won the in-season tournament gang, and then they went off a cliff. Now, yes, they won the last two games, but one of them was last night when they needed 23 free throws in the fourth quarter to squeak by the Raptors by one. So I'm not sure they're very good either. Ashley, let's start with you. Yeah. Of these three, none of them want to, none of them are really where they want to be. Right. Who's the most disappointing to you so far? Um, I would probably say it's a toss-up between the Suns and the Warriors. I think whenever you think about a dynasty in the NBA, you think of the Golden State Warriors, you think of them being able to figure it out, right, in some way, shape, or form. Whether you like it, whether you hate it, they're always some way, somehow in the mix. I think obviously with Draymond Green and these self-inflicted wounds and whatever else it is that he's dealing with off the court has had a serious trickle-down effect to the Golden State Warriors. Klay Thompson had a little bit of a hard time finding his footing earlier in the season. And I think he's getting better. I think that's safe to say. The Chris Paul experiment is still an experiment. There's been talks yeah. of him maybe being on the move. And now we know he's out um, dealing with a fracture. I believe it is wrist. So he's just, he can't catch a break. Steph Curry, once again, the load is all on him. And as we know, the reason you brought Chris Paul into the equation was to relieve some of that load from Steph Curry so that he was healthy come when you needed him the most, March, April playoffs. But it looks like, what can go wrong will go wrong. Obviously, Draymond is returning. It's going to be interesting to see what yeah. version we get of Draymond. Is it this namaste version who doesn't argue with the referees? Because if it's not, if it's more of the same, I just don't know how this is going to help. If anything, it's going to hurt. And one more thing on this. I mean, we know the reports. Kaminga and the guys, the younger guys in the locker room are weren't happy with Steve Kerr. There's a lot of conversations if Steve Kerr is the coach that can go ahead and develop them. It just seems that, you know, all dynasties, you know, you talk about the Patriots, the Warriors, the Roman Empire, they all fall eventually. So I think we're starting to see that in Golden State, and it's sad. Yeah, I mean, there's fault lines with all three of these teams. I, I'm with Ashley. I, I think the Warriors are the most disappointing team, but that's because I had actual expectations for this team. And right. I think there are still reasons if you want to look at the glass half full, the Rorschach test, just squint your eyes. I think you can see a path forward. Obviously, Wiggins has to play better. The locker room has to get to a better spot. Draymond Green has to find his inner peace. I'm, I'm skeptical, but even his defensive excellence, I mean, their defense has been really poor. I know there's a, there's an influence on this podcast, a, a certain producer who doesn't love Steve Kerr's rotations. That becomes even clearer, I think, and it is true when Steph Curry can't be Superman. So those things maybe are correctable. To, to rely on the Suns was to rely on three guys who are almost always injured to be healthy together. That is not the pattern of their careers, certainly of late. It has not been the pattern of the season. And while I understand they have a, a huge ceiling, so is, you know, hitting the greens on, 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 on roulette. I, I'm not betting on it. I'm not betting on the Suns. I know that they have a higher ceiling than the other two teams. I just think there's a likelihood they don't get there. And I'm, on the Lakers, look, I've covered LeBron James for a long time. We've all talked about him nonstop. He's obviously the most important force in basketball over the course of his career. And, and even though he's almost 40 years old, he's still amazing. But Darvin Ham is addicted to his minutes, which is true of every coach that's ever coached him. I don't know how many times we've had these conversations that they're going to play him fewer minutes and then it's out of control when you get to this point of the year. But the guy is at the most minutes, I think, right now in the National Basketball Association. And unlike four years ago, LeBron James cannot carry a team to June if he has to carry them all the way up to mid-April when the playoffs start. And this isn't very nice, and I like the guy. But I do think that if 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 you're on the radio show that I host and and, and you listen, we, we we sometimes refer to Anthony Davis as Anthony Humpty Dumpty Davis, and I want to be wrong. I want the pieces put back together. I'm just saying, like he's amazing. But do you really believe that AD is going to stay healthy and all of this wear and tear is not going to get on LeBron? And even with these guys, no. they're not very good. So for they're they're flawed. I know LeBron can carry a team. I know the Suns have this ceiling that they get healthy, they get right. I think the Warriors are the most likely team to turn it around because I think their problems are most likely to be to be fixable. I do maybe the Warriors. Go ahead, John. Go ahead. No, please. 
No, I was going to say, I do think that the Warriors, I mean, the Lakers rather, it's not so much just AD's health, which obviously I think is fair to say. And, you know, I know people like to throw around the names or whatever, but I will say it's it's a it's a legitimate cause for concern because some point of the season his body will break down. But I think it's also when he is available, you get really, really great versions of him like they got last night. And then you get versions of him where he gives you eight points, 19 points a game. And with a LeBron James, who's almost 40, you can't go ahead and rely on that inconsistency. It's a combination with AD between availability, but also productivity when he actually is on the court. It's like flipping a coin. You don't know what version of AD you're going to get. And yes, I know some people will say, well, the last few games he's had 30 plus points. Great, but you know a 19-point, 8-point game is right around the corner, and that's the biggest question mark with this Lakers team because they can't function like that at this stage in LeBron's career. It's just not going to work. Unreliable. You're 100% in two different – you know, the Suns and Anthony Davis are similar. There are so many heights, but as Ash says, that unreliable in, in so many ways. In Anthony Davis' case, you're right. Like, on the floor in the postseason at times – and physically, you're always holding your breath, John. I think the history for AD is no doubt you guys should, are right to question it. But that's my thing right now that I think their expectations for the Lakers are probably a little skewed, right? Because Anthony Davis has been available. He leads the NBA in total minutes. You've got they've only missed three games total between Anthony Davis and LeBron James. So you would think if both of those guys are healthy and both of those guys are on the floor, they would be good, right? But that's the flaw of this Lakers roster. You look at them after those top two guys, who's their third guy? It's Austin Reeves, right? He went from a guy who was basically barely in the NBA to a bench player, to a rotation player, to their third guy, to a guy who was really good at the World Cup. And everybody thought him coming in this season, oh man, can you imagine it? He's going to be just as good this season. And he really hasn't been. He's taken a step back. So real quick before we move on, Bill, I'm going to let you go first because we know that you've got other things for CBS HQ. Do they need to make a trade? I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of whispers about, hey, maybe it's DeJounte Murray, maybe it's Zach Levine, but don't forget... The yeah. Pelicans still control their draft. I mean, I, if I'm the Lakers, I want DeJounte Murray. And if I'm me, I want to be tall. But some things are are, are not necessarily realistic. I mean, the answer is yes. But this, again, I think is why I, I like the Warriors' likelihood of improving more quickly or, or, or more likely than the Warriors, than the Lakers. Because the Warriors have some assets that are valued around the NBA and maybe undervalued in their organization. I mean, who are you tr- – I guess you're moving Austin Reeves. Or is that something Rob Polinka wants to do? Zach Levine's the name that's out there, but what does it cost to get Zach Levine? It's obviously a bunch of your picks going forward, though there's some constraints there. So, so yes, and Rob Polinka, I think, earned the right to be motivated to do it because last trade deadline, he sort of played, uh, you know, mad ch- chemist and, and mad scientist, and it, and it worked. But I don't know that the path forward to the right move is as easy for the Lakers as it is, say, for the Warriors if they go that route. And yeah, John, real quick on that, I mean, what is it realistically going to do? I mean, you look at the standings right now in the West. You have Minnesota, OKC, Denver, Clippers, Sacramento, the Pelicans, Dallas, Houston, Phoenix, and then the Lakers. Let's say they do get a DeJounte Murray. Let's say they do get that piece, that player that they're looking for. How much realistically is it going to help them make that jump? This is a playoff play-in team at best. This is not a playoff team. It takes more than just one player to go ahead and turn this team around. The construction of it just doesn't work. I don't know if I'm a Darvin Ham believer. I just don't think there's enough out there and the Lakers have enough to give another team in order to help them make this jump when the West is still so stacked. I just don't see it. Yeah, I don't see it either. Uh, Tough spot for the Lakers this year.